No, I'm not. So I've made some progress. That's a good idea, right? Yeah, I thought you'd agree. <laughs> I haven't made a lot of progress. I've made a bit of progress and I thought we'd sort of talk through it. And I'm going to give you a part for Eagle. So I've designed a, a part for it. Um, so it's got the right footprint. Oh, it's, it's fairly generous, the footprint. But I think for the first prototype, we have to be generous because these things vary. Where are they? These little buggers, they vary in length um, from like 28 millimeters to 30 millimeters. And the width can vary as well. So the cutout for these, in fact, I've done, we'll talk about it when we get into the eagle thing. But I've also made a mini breadboard prototype. Whoa, okay, some wires flying about there. A mini breadboard prototype that I'll show you. Now, obviously you've lit one of these up before, but I'm using a different IC this time. So before I was using, well, I wasn't using anything because I hadn't breadboarded it up. But what I was going to use was two 74HC 595s to drive it. Um, that would have worked fine. It would have given me 16 outputs. But uh, instead, I'm using a TLC 5940, which is a 12-bit 16-channel PWM LED driver. And the 12-bit means you get 4,096 or 95 levels of brightness. So um, it'll be interesting. These LEDs don't have that kind of range, obviously. Uh, they're a bit more stepped, but I can show you it in action. Uh, and I can talk about how my chip's probably inferior to your one. <laughs> All right, let's get, let's take a look at uh, this first on the bench and then we'll jump into Eagle and I'll show you the little board that I've knocked up to. So here it is on a breadboard. Now, it's a bit janky looking, I agree, uh, but I, I sort of wanted to be able to develop it with it off the board. So I didn't want it sort of flat. So we've got it at an angle. Unfortunately, it means when it's stood up like this flat, you can't really see it. I'm going to have to angle it for the whole time. Anyway, what we've got is our filaments uh, soldered together with the positive as um, a common, essentially. So all of these have a common positive and the negatives, uh, the cathode goes to the TLC5940 because it's a current sink, um, which I think it that might be where it differs from your IC. I can't remember what it's called, Sion. It's like an MCP something, isn't it? I think. Um, but this one is a current sink and it will sink up to 120 milliamps across all of the channels. So it's not a great deal, but it'll be enough, um, certainly enough to be very bright. Um, but it I don't think it gives you a huge range of brightness. So I have to limit the current with a resistor, single resistor on the TLC5940. Now, the problem here in comparison to your IC, which is I squared C, is this one requires a few more lines, unfortunately. Now, I think I remember you saying yours required only four. Um, well, I think this one requires five. Well, actually, it turns out it might be six or seven or eight. So let's talk them talk them out. Essentially, you've got uh, so from each one of these boards, if we were to daisy chain them, um, you need the sort of serial out to be copied across, and you need a clock to be crop copied across, um, and you need serial in to be copied across, as well as power and ground, and the blank pin. So that's what five, six already. So it's more wires essentially, but. It is, a, it's kind of a similar chip your, to yours, but um, this one's a current sink and I'm not quite sure what your one is. Should we turn it on and have a look? So I've set it up so it's just counting. That's fairly bright. Let me just turn the light off so you can see this a bit better. There we go. Oh, I kind of need something to um, diminish the brightness a little bit. Let's see if uh, this will work. Not ideal, is it? However, with a different PCB, I think it will be a bit easier and they'll be able to be closer together. Now, I have a thought about that and I'll discuss it when we get to the PCB, but um, this is what they look like. They're really pretty, aren't they? You can see that there are um, one, two, three, four, five LEDs in each section. Let's just, uh, we'll zoom in on that so you can have a look 
a bit closer and I'll change the exposure. So there you go, you can see that there are five LEDs in each section and they don't go quite to the outside. Now to the naked eye, it actually illuminates this phosphor. I can't see my fingers. <laughs> Now to the naked eye, it does illuminate this uh, sort of, is it phosphored coating? Whatever it is, the yellow coating. It illuminates that a bit, but not an awful lot. So we are dealing with that section here as the light. So we have some dead space. Um, but I think you'll agree, it actually, it still displays a number from a little bit further away. Now the camera here is, God, I'm going to be terrible at this. Uh, 20 centimeters away so when you're much further away actually it's it's very readable up to like half a meter and it um it all sort of blends into one so that's it on a breadboard doing some counting using the tlc 5940 um, it's not doing any pwm dimming at the moment but um i haven't programmed that in yet let's take a look at eagle where you can see where i've knocked up a part and started designing a terrible board so here we are in Eagle. Here's my current board layout. Let's skip out of that quickly. And here is my schematic. Now these are the little filament LEDs. They're not so little. I've not really done this for a while, creating a footprint for something and a symbol in a package. So you'll have to make do with the bodge job I've done. So let's um, let's open up the library. Uh, let's find it. There we go. It's called the Filament LEDs library. I've put LEDs because there are two packages in here. So the device is the LED 28 to 30 millimeter uh, thing. So essentially I've made the pads large enough to accommodate any change in length because the length actually, the length change comes from those uh, big metal bits that stick out the end. So the anode and the cathode. Uh, so this is the, the, uh, the symbol. Uh, well, this is the actual package and with the bits connected. So you've got two separate ones, milled and solid. Uh, so let's have a look at the symbol. So this is the symbol. It actually could be a lot smaller than this. Turns out I didn't really realize the uh, the dimensions in here. But um, so you've got name, which is defaults to LED, and then it increases the the number on that so you can see that are changing and value as well you can add so it could be a 12 volt or a 3 volt or or whatever you fancy um, if we go to the packages so this is like the the footprint so this is the footprint for a solid one so this is where you don't mess around with a pcb all i've done is two pads at an appropriate width apart and then put some arrows on so you know which way to put the the anode and the cathode so essentially you're uh, pointing it in the path of the traditional current flow and then we've got one that's milled now this one has a dimension polygon on this now i don't think it has to be a filled polygon but i liked the look of it so I went for the filled polygon. Um, you can see if I right click and do properties, you can see that it is indeed on the dimension layer and it's a polygon. So it's got solid pore on it, but that's because it sort of looks like these warm colored LEDs. So uh, that in a board layout looks a bit like this. Now I've been having a think about this design because this is the design that we're going to go for and this is sort of the layout I've done here and I'll show you the board dimensions actually because it's kind of big. So if I measure from the very bottom here to the top we get 95 millimeters and if I measure it across it is 40 millimeters across so 95 by 40 now if you think about how large these filaments are that's not terrible that's all right but we can make it smaller and i'm just about to show you how we can do that at least how i think we can do it um, some of these leds filaments can actually overlap so you'll see here i've done that here i've put one on the bottom layer let me see if i can get that into uh, the center position yeah i've put one on the bottom layer and one on the top not perfectly aligned doesn't matter uh, i don't think i have a fine enough grid or i messed around with the grid halfway through and then whatever uh, so one on the bottom one on the top so two pads overlapping and it means we can decrease the distance between these and in some cases completely remove it um, 
so certainly with these ones here, you've got to have some space at the bottom, but um, obviously this isn't matched up. I was just trying some things out. So we can move this one up here, could come just there. And we can shorten the gap between these LEDs, meaning that we can make the whole board probably about five millimeters smaller, which would be really useful. And somewhere on here, we need to put some uh, sort of concatenating wires, concatenating chain wires, whatever you'd call it, so that you can add it to the next one in the display. Or, which, or it's a big or, or we could just design a board with four of these on. So four displays. So you could default to a clock essentially. So this is where I'm at. And I'll put a link to the library so that you can tear it apart and make it better um, in the description of this video. I won't put a link to this because this is garbage and it's me playing around. But uh, yeah, so what I've done is create a part in Eagle that we can use that you can choose the package. So if I right click it, the cross is there if you want to find it. So we can change the package in here to be milled or unmilled. I don't know why it's, why wouldn't it let me change the package? Oops. Oh, well, I'll just go and replace it. So it's in filament LEDs and we can choose solid or not. So I've just changed that one. If we look in the board design, you can see that we've now replaced it with one that doesn't mill out the section. Um, so in fact, I can just get rid of the dimension layer on here. Uh, so that, oh, where's my layers? Ah, there they are. So we can remove that dimension layer and you'll be able to see what it would look like um, with those removed. Um, so that would be looking through the board essentially. So yeah, we can either have it or not. So it's up to you. You can choose. All right. So I'll leave the ball in your court, thankfully, because it's been ages since I replied to you. So sorry. Um, I've just been busy making a badge, working, drinking, watching football. Uh, basically, we're going to win the World Cup. <laughs> oh jinxed it now but it's coming home